Control is a word being repeated by Ralf Rangnick time and time again among many other words in his interviews as he tries to fix Manchester United. But it is control which seems to have some importance over the others. So far though, there has been a lack of it on the pitch. So, how can Rangnick set up the team to take control with the players at his disposal or is this simply down to recruitment in January of new players who fit his system? If you want to win games, you have to control, no matter if the other team has got the ball or you are in possession of the ball yourself. That was one of the first things that Ranić said in his opening interview as a Manchester United manager, and that was one month ago now. Since then, there has been a halt in their progression with Covid stopping some players from training, but he has managed six matches now, and their latest against Wolves showed nothing to say that the players are taken on board what he's saying. So is this a formation thing? Is it the players not being able to implement what he said over the last month, or maybe the fact that they came into this season with the ambition of challenging for the title, thinking that they'd made that step, but are now being told again to basically start from scratch and learn something totally new. It's probably a mix of all of those things. The 4 triple 2 has been the formation of choice for Ranić because it's what he knows best, he has experience of this formation, but so far doesn't seem to have the players at Manchester United performing well. He's wanted control and pressing from his players and these were two things highlighted in his post-match interview after the 1-0 loss to Wolves. He said how they switched to a back 3 system in the second half and this allowed for more control, plus he said how the team didn't press at all and couldn't get into those pressing situations, he said this was due to the overload in midfield that Wolves had. Had. From these quotes, the problems are clear, and it may suggest moving towards a different formation, for the meantime at least, with the players he has right now. Before looking into an alternative formation, it is important to see exactly the issues on the pitch right now. They have big problems when passing out from the back, and the 4 triple 2 has meant that the midfield can become non-existent as Matic likes to come deeper to collect the ball from the defenders. Then Scott McTominay, as the other midfielder against Wolves, isn't great at offering himself for a pass and he's the only other central midfielder, meaning that regularly there is an open space in the middle of the park. This build-up then leads to safe passes to the fullbacks or dive direct fast passes forward that become hard to control because of the power behind them. Keeping the ball in dictating a match comes down to your midfield, taking the ball away from your centre-backs, giving them a passing option, being reliable on the ball, your ball retention with passing range and progressive passing. It's something that United don't have in midfielders and it's why, in my opinion, to move forward with the 4 triple 2 recruitment is the only way to progress with this setup. If he wants to keep this formation for the rest of the season, then midfielders and probably two of them have to be bought in the market to suit this style. Before the next part, we're closing down on 10,000 subscribers, so if you do enjoy the analysis, please consider clicking the subscribe button and help me get the channel to that milestone, it really will be very much appreciated. So away from the 4 triple 2, what could be next for United? Well, as they did change to the 3 at the back system, it's the first one to look into. They came out in the second half against Wolves with the team looking like this, and later it did change to Ronaldo as a lone striker with Cavani and Fernandes just behind. The change to this formation did make a difference, where United weren't in their own box as much, Wolves didn't have as much of the ball in the centre of the pitch and instead were forced out wide for the majority of the second half. So why did this allow them to be better on the ball? Well, instead of Matic dropping deeper to collect the ball every time and making a back three as he goes in between the centre backs, the back three was already there, which meant that Matic and McTominay could be in front of the centre backs to receive the ball. Now with this being said, Matic still had a tendency to come deeper which didn't help at all, but this formation with the right personnel can consistently help the issue of no midfielders in front of the centre-backs. This will help to build from the defence into the midfield, then possibly out wide to the fullbacks or to the wingers who will still come narrower as Ranić wants them to. So all you're really doing with this formation is losing a second striker but helping to fix a major issue through midfield. What this formation can also do is still be effective in terms of pressing which is another thing that needs to be learnt by the United players. There was a particular moment in the 61st minute where Jadon Sancho, who was playing as a left wing back, did very well out of possession, and we saw a glimpse of what Ralf Rangnick wants to see from the team consistently. With Semedo on the right for Wolves, he wanted to run forward, but Sancho blocked it by pressing, Semedo ran inside and
and Sancho followed him by pressurizing him all the way. He kept forcing him inside and this led to Semedo making a pass back to Cody. The pass came just short of Cody and meant that Fernandez, who had closed that space already, intercepted the pass but couldn't quite get it under his control and Wolves did get the ball back again. However, this was a moment where United put pressure on Wolves and forced them to make a mistake which nearly led to a chance created for the team. Now who would make up the first 11 for this formation is the key debate, the midfield and the wingbacks in particular. Because you'd want to move on from Fred and McTominay, Matic has shown the tendency to come deeper which you don't really want in this formation, Donny van der Beek hasn't proven anything on the pitch and Ranić is another manager to not select him in the first 11, and Paul Pogba is still injured. You go around in circles with this midfield selection, but if Pogba is fit of course he goes straight in, and if Fred can cut out the mistakes and perform like he did when Ranić arrived, then this midfield duo could be the one. In terms of the wingbacks, Jadon Sancho on the left wasn't too bad against Wolves, but to have him on the right would make a lot of sense to get the best out of him. On the left, it'd mean having Tellez as surest part of the back three, but maybe you could have Diogo Dallo. He played on the left when he was on loan at AC Milan, even though he's right-footed, so this could work. In attack, I've gone for one striker with two players behind to once again help with the build-up and passing between the lines. So Ronaldo with Fernandez and Greenwood, who was fantastic against against Wolves and seems to be developing really well now, this could be a good forward three. What about another formation? What if Ralph Renyuk wanted to stick with the back four? Could a 4-3-3 begin to work? It might be worth a shot as what you find here, if Matic was in the first 11 as the defensive midfielder, he can do the dropping between the centre-backs which he likes to do. If you had him do that, then you could instruct your centre-backs to be a bit wider and this would push the full-backs up. And you still have your two midfielders centrally, if one of them is Fernandez though, which would be quite likely, he'd have to be instructed to not move so far forward when playing out from the back. It does work very similar to the three at the back formation, but it also allows Matic some freedom to come forward with the midfield like a centre back wouldn't be able to in a back three. It's basically a more attacking version of the three at the back system, having three midfielders instead of two, and once again this would definitely work better with recruitment in January. It's clear that midfield reinforcements are needed, so comment midfielders that you want United to sign. If you enjoyed, please click the like button, it really helps more than you think to get the videos found and the channel to grow, so please, it would be very much appreciated if you could. And for more insight and analysis, subscribe to Route 1.